<clears throat> the gear blanks begin as a sheet of 1 8 inch engraver's brass. And the first step is to rough cut them into squares uh, a bit oversized um, because later they're going to be turned down on the lathe to the uh, correct size. Yuri has um, about 30 gears. Most of them are different, different sizes, different tooth counts. Um, so this process is going to take a while and I won't make you watch all of it. But brass is very expensive and very little will go to waste. Um, this piece will be used to cut a lot of the uh, smaller gears. Um, while I'm cutting the gear blanks, I'm also going to cut 1 8 inch ABS because during a lot of the machining processes on the gears, uh, you want a backing material so that the uh, as the cutter passes through the gear, it doesn't uh, break chips out the back. Uh, so backing everything up with a piece of ABS, which is scrap in this case, um, it prevents a lot of cleanup that has, would normally have to occur. So with the blade in the same position, I'm going to cut some backers now for those gears I just cut. I've begun the process of drilling a, a hole in the center of each gear blank, and uh, as well as the ABS backing and because there are somewhere around 60 gears and um, another 30 or more backings we're talking about drilling a hundred holes or so and it's a it's a slow process I've been working on this for about a day now and I'm only about halfway through it but uh, I'm going to show you now how I go about doing that the first thing I do is measure each uh, gear blank in both directions because um, I'm trying to find the center point. Now keep in mind all of these gear blanks have been uh, manufactured or cut um, a, a good tenth of, a, of an inch larger than the diameter of the circle that we're ultimately going to cut so there is some room for error um, in my favor. Um, so once I find the, uh, the size, I, I simply use a calculator, divide that in half, and now I'm going to um, jog the uh, drill bit so that it is in the dead center. So now it's just a matter of placing the blank I'm sorry, the zero, the zero point is referenced off the upper left hand corner. So now it's just a matter of putting the blank in, making sure it's registered, tightening the vise. And then, and then starting the G-code program which is just a simple uh, drill and peck cycle. I'm using a 135 degree split point drill bit so the, it eliminates the need for having to center drill a pilot. But I do find that even, even though brass is normally cut dry without any lubricant, drilling for me works best if I keep the uh, the part and the bit well lubricated. I'm also doing, using this to clear the the, uh, the swar. And that's it. 
it's not unusual to have a um, some cleanup that has to be done. I simply use a, uh, a countersink in my hand and I gently rotate it a couple of times and that cleans all that out. Um, it, like I said, it's a very gentle and simple process to do and it just makes the hole clear. Um, blow a little air on it, get rid of the swarf, make sure the make sure the vise is clean again, place the next blank in. Now this blank is the same size as the last one so I don't have to repeat this, the centering operation but uh, I continue this process through about a hundred blanks. Uh, okay, at this point uh, several days have passed and I've begun cutting the uh, squares into circles. Um, the circles, like the squares, are oversized uh, for each gear blank because ultimately these are going to be mounted on the lathe and turned to the actual size. And Let me uh, take you around to the other side here and I'll show you how I use the bandsaw to turn squares into circles. A simple jig uh, that comes from the way woodworkers uh, use a bandsaw to turn a circle. It's nothing more than a piece of MDF with some holes drilled in it uh, with different size uh, axles depending on what I'm what I'm working on. Um, the objective now is to take one of the blanks, fit it over the axle, and bring it right up to but not but not touching the blade. Um, should be a little bit of wiggle room in here. Like that. The other thing is you want to make sure that the teeth of the blade are aligned with the front. Now that's from the from my position from facing the bandsaw. The teeth need to be aligned with the front of the axle. And then when you have it right, just clamp it down in place. Turn on the bandsaw and we're just going to spin the blank and it's going to cut the corners off. That's really all there is to it. Um, it's not exactly a circle, but um, like I said, the lathe will will finish it up. Um, you'll be tempted to make this tighter so that it's closer to a circle. My recommendation is not to do that. Let the lathe do the work. Once you've got at this point, I've, be, I've completed the process of turning all of the squares into what I call almost circles. Um, you know, they were done on the bandsaw, so they're not perfectly round, but in a little while we're going to be using a lathe to turn them perfectly round into the exact dimension that they need to be for a gear blank. What I'm going to do now is uh, a little bit un unconventional, uh, at least the way I do it is, but at some point in the process, you have to um, remove the milling marks that are inherent in any metals that you buy. I mean, they're just part of the manufacturing process, and you may not be able to see them, but if you've ever, you know, held a raw piece of brass or aluminum, you know that there are, you know, scratches and dents and so forth in it, and I want to uh, face that off. So. What I've done, uh, all the holes that I've drilled so far are undersized for the final gear. Um, not a lot, but they're undersized. And 
The reason I've done that is I've made this, um, it's nothing more than a piece of steel that, that comes to a point, but I've done it in such a way that the gear will only go so far onto it, and the rest of this is going to go in this hole here, behold with the tailstock. I took the face plate of my lathe and I cut a, a, a piece of aluminum to, to fit on it and give me a nice flat surface. And then I took a mouse pad, and the bottom of a mouse pad, as you know, is anti-skid. I mean, it's so that the mouse pad stays in place on your desk. So that gives me a nice surface, because if all I have to do is apply a little bit of pressure uh, with the tailstock, and and I lock down the tailstock, and this gear isn't isn't going anywhere. I can you know I can machine it now. So I've set the lathe up so that the uh, x-axis zero point brings the tool bit right up to and just about touches the uh, spindle that I've created here. So first thing I have to do is get my Z point set and that the Z point is going to vary because this is a flexible material and depending on how much pressure I apply it, it's not, not always going to be in the same place but it's a very simple process to get that centered. I just bring the tool in a little bit and I rotate this while I'm jogging the Z axis in one thousandth at a time and as soon as I feel the slightest amount of uh, grip, you know, where it's actually touching the blank, uh, that's where I'm going to stop. Then I back out, advance in one more thousandth, and then uh, using MDI commands, I'm going to uh, face this. my fault, I didn't back out far enough with my command, but um, I mean even uh, even watching the video you can probably see that this went from being dull and scratched to having a pretty nice shine to it. Now it's not perfect, uh, it's going to need sanding like it always does and we'll worry about that later, but at this point um, you know the milling marks have pretty much been removed. I might, um, on this particular blank, I might take off one more thousand. But. You have to um, remove it because there are two sides to it here, obviously. Um, turn it over, place it back in here, and repeat the process. And uh, you know, we've, we're working on 60 gears, but because they have two sides, this is 120 operations that have to be done. Uh, but it's worth it to do it now and so you have a nice clean surface when you're working.